Greetings pre-algebra students. This is section 3 of chapter 1, Properties of Real Numbers. If someone asks me to describe some properties of you, what they're asking me to give are some distinct, distinctive characteristics of, about you. So a property is a distinctive characteristic or an attribute. It's a big word, attribute. So what makes you unique? Tell me something unique about you and that will be a property uh, about yourself. So as we're going through these mathematical properties, I want you to ask yourself what's unique about each property. The first property is the commutative property. I've drawn a little car here because I, when I think of commute, I think of going to work. Um, the commutative property for multiplication looks like this. A times B, my screen is jumping for some reason, equals B times A. So again, I said it makes me think of commuting to work. I'm at home and I go to work, A to B, and then from work I go back home. So they call that your daily commute. So the commutative property, A times B, and then B times A. With uh, addition, it's very similar, except instead of multiplying, we're going to add A plus B equals B plus A. And if you put numbers in for those variables, you'll know that, that they'll always be true. It doesn't matter if you say A plus B or if you say B plus A. That is the commutative property. Either order gives us the same result. Then there's another property called the associative property. <clears throat> I always like to think of the cafeteria when I talk about the associative property. That's always a hard place to associate with people. So when we're doing it for multiplication, we have three folks here. Uh, currently, B is associating at the table with A. So they're in conversation here in parentheses. And B is a social butterfly. And so after B talks with A for a while, B decides to associate with C. So I always will talk about uh, B as a person talking to two people to help you associate with the word associative. B associates with A, then B associates with C. This is all for multiplication. Again, it doesn't matter. They're equal, whether you multiply A times B first and then times C, or if you multiply B times C and then multiply times A. So we're gonna be working on identifying these types of properties and the ones that are equal to each other. So now we're going to make it for addition the same situation. Add your parentheses. A can associate with B through addition and then add to C or B can associate with C and then add to A. Alright, the next two properties are identity properties. When you hear the term identity I want you to think of it being the state of remaining the same. Um, if I ask you to show me your ID, it should be your picture on your ID. So uh, it's the same person on the ID as the person showing me their ID. They have to be the same. If you give me someone else's ID card, then it's not your ID, it's not your identity, it's someone else's. So I want you to think of ID for identity. Additive identity. A, I said to A, to add something, and I still want, when I ask for your identity, I still want to see A. So what can we add to A and still have A? Well, zero is the only thing you can add to A and still have A. That's called the additive identity. It doesn't matter if you put the zero first or second. Zero plus A, A plus zero, either one, you're still going to have the identity of A. Multiplicative identity, again, let's use A. I want whose ID? I want A's ID. What can I multiply times A and still get A? The answer is one. And again, the order here because of the comm uh, commutative property, A times one, one times A, it doesn't matter, you're still gonna get A. 
So identity, I want, if I'm A is who I'm multiplying by, I need to see A's ID. If A is who I'm adding to, I want to see A on the other side. So you have to think about what do I add to A to get A? What do I multiply to get A? Now, the multiplicative property of zero, there's no identity word in this expression, multiplicative property of zero. That's just saying anything times zero is zero. And again, the commutative property, you could put the zero first. Zero times A is still going to be zero. Now, a counterexample is sometimes used in math. And a counterexample is an example that shows something is not true. So in other words, if you can give me an example where the situation is not true, that's called a counterexample. Is division of whole numbers commutative? If not, give, an, give a counterexample. So, okay, so I'm going to pick two um, whole numbers. How about, let's make it easy, 4 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. The commutative property, if you look back at the top of your page, looks like this. I should be able to, if I say 4 divided by 2, say 2 divided by 4. That's the commutative property. Is that statement true? Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. So those are not equal. So since they are not equal, this is my counterexample. So the question is yes or no, and the answer is no, and here is my counterexample. All right, name each of these following properties. See if you could recognize the properties as we go through these problems. 3 times 10, there's supposed to be parentheses here, 3 times 10 equals 10 times 3. That is which one? The commutative property of multiplication. We went to work, and then from work we went home. 4 plus 0 equals 4. Hey, 4 is on both sides, so that's an identity. Are we adding? Yes, so it's the additive identity I'm abbreviating for the sake of time. I see some parentheses. The only one that had parentheses in it was the associative property, and this is the associative property of addition because I have addition signs. 5 associated with 2, and then 5 associated with M. Again, I have 8 on both sides, so that is a hint that it's an ID problem. And 8 is being multiplied, so it's the multiplicative identity. All right, if you flip over to the back, to simplify an expression, we combine like terms or like things together using the properties from this section. So when we're called to simplify, we will use these properties. We will use what is called deductive reasoning. This is the use of specific facts, properties, or rules to make a logical conclu conclusion. All right, deductive reasoning is to use specific facts, properties, or rules. The opposite of deductive reasoning, just in case you wanted to know, is inductive reasoning. And that type of reasoning, inductive, is based on observations. It's not based on um, properties and rules. So that's what makes deductive different from inductive. Deductive is a little more concrete. All right, notice that the properties we've learned about deal with situations that have the same operation. Multiplicative property, they're the same operation on both sides, okay, on, throughout the whole problem. So let's look here. Simplify each expression given a reason for each step. Well, the first thing we would do here is to say 5 needs to be multiplied times 3 because I can't multiply 3 times r. So I need to multiply 5 times 3 and then multiply times r. The reason for that is the associative property. That's what allows me to associate 3 with 5. And 3 times 5 is 15. I still can't multiply times r, so 15r is all I can do. So how did I go from here to there? I multiplied. So I'm justifying each step as I go.
Okay, B, we come down below. I cannot add x plus 18. Hmm, I also can't add x plus 12. So the first thing I really need to do is rearrange the, rearrange the terms. So x plus 18, I'm gonna rearrange and put 18 plus x. What have I just done? I said, well, if x plus 18 is okay, then 18 plus x is okay. That is the commutative property, allows me to rearrange. Now, if I associate 18 with 12, I have some numbers that I can add together, some like terms. And 12 and 18 together make 30 plus x. So how did I get 30? I used addition. All right, let's do C together. Eight times C times 10. The first thing I need to do is the um, commutative property where I rearrange 10 and C. That's commutative. Then I can associate eight with 10 versus C because 10 can't be multiplied with C. So I want to associate 10 with 8, and now I can multiply and end up with 80C. All right, jump over here and we'll do F together. 9 times G plus 2. Hmm, wait a minute. I have a multiplication and I have an addition. That doesn't work. If you go back to our notes, we said they need to be using the same operation. I don't know why I wrote name. Not the same, not the same operation. So I cannot use any of the properties for F. I'm going to leave you to do D and E on your own. I think that you have everything you need to successfully attempt those two on your own. Let's look down at example four. Which one of the following is an example of the associative property? I'm going to help you out just a little bit and tell you that the associative property is the one with the parentheses where we're associating with other people. So I know it's not A and it's not C. And I'm going to wait and check to see if you were able to choose between B and D correctly. So circle the one that you feel is the correct answer and have a joyful day.